In this next video, what we want to think about is how are structs really stored and a little bit how they work. And also we're going to cover, importantly, once we understand a little bit about how structs are stored, how we, how we can put a string in a struct, which is a very useful thing to do. So if we think about that last program we just dealt with, we had a main and it stored a lot of stuff in it. Everything that we stored in that last program was on the stack. And specifically, it had ended up having, I guess, four rooms. Each one of them we can think of as this big thing that's all part of wherever it gets stored on the stack. And uh, in this case, it had three fields of the room number. So I think room one was number 103. And the seats, OK, and then like room two you know, is its own thing that's sitting here on the stack that has its own uh, values for all of these fields. So what happens when we do an assignment operation? Remember, we did something like room found, and then we said something like uh, found equals room one. What that does is we have another variable here on the stack called found, and that's another one of these structs. And again, when we assign that, when we use the assignment operator, it really just copies each piece from one struct to another one. So that would copy 103 into here and 12 and true, just like that. So when we do this assignment operator, it's just going to make a copy of everything in that struct. OK, so now let's think about how strings would work in a struct. And the key idea with strings is, so strings in structs, the key idea is we use, we want to use um, like stack-based arrays if we can. Remember, a string is just an array of chars. Stack-based um, array if we can. And this goes not just for strings, but really for any array. So I'll say any array in structs, but we'll talk about the more general case of like heap-based arrays in structs a little bit later. But um, if we can, the limitation is that they must have fixed size. Um, so unlike stack-based arrays in our regular programs where we can read in a number n and then make an array of size n, we can't do that with an array as in a struct. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because when you declare the struct, you have to know what size that array is going to be. Um, but this struct gets declared before main. And so you don't have any variables there uh, that you've like read in from the user or something. Um, you really have to have a fixed size. And so that's why this makes a lot of sense for something like a uh, string. So with C string, that fixed size might be 128. That's what we've used in this class, although it could be something else if whatever you want. Um, but if you have an array of ints or something, that, that might make sense sometimes and might not make sense other times. So we'll talk more about general arrays in structs um, a little bit later. But for now, if we're just thinking about like strings in a struct, then just that's going to be fine uh, to use a type like C string. So let's look at an example here. I'm going to open a different file about voting. And because the election is kind of on our mind, uh, but I don't want to talk about the presidential election, uh, let's think about some other congressional elections. So what do we need to know um, about a candidate in an election is, so let's make a struct. This is, remember, our syntax to do a type def and a struct at the same time, so we can have a simple uh, name for it. So we want to have, and I'm not going to say the types yet, we want to have like a name. Um, maybe we want to have a party affiliation, and we want to have how many votes did they get. And I'm going to say candidate is the type there. Okay, so what should the type of each of these things be? Well, name is the is the kind of new idea here. That one, we want it to be a C string. So if we did our type def above for C string, we could just say C string name. That would work. 
but if we don't feel like doing that separate type def, we can always declare it just like we would. Um, so we'll say char name 128. So this is really the same as if we did a type def C string. Uh, so this is making that be an array of chars of this size. But it's a static array that's going to live inside the struct, as opposed to if we use the other syntax with the pointer, that would make it live outside the struct, and that's something else we'll talk about later. So this is just a simple string um, that lives inside there. For party, I think we can represent the party by a single char, um, usually R or D in the United States, and votes, that can be an int. Uh, yeah, ints can go up to a few billion, so for any elections in the United States, uh, we're fine storing them as uh, ints. And now let's let's make some candidate structs. Let's practice our syntax that we learned before. So what I'm going to do is uh, I, I looked up the results from Maryland's 3rd Congressional District, which is the congressional district that surrounds the Naval Academy. It's the one that I live in, and it's... Uh, Famous for being one of the most gerrymandered congressional districts in the whole country. Um, so if you look up the shape of Maryland's third congressional district, you'll see that it doesn't make any sense at all, unless your goal is to, well, whatever. Um, so so uh, the, there, there were two candidates in the election. One was John Sarbanes. So uh, his name is, I'll just say candidate one, um, was... John Sarbanes, and so that's his name, and his party is, he's a Democrat, and he got 196,062 votes when I just looked this up, and candidate two was Charles Anthony, who was a Republican, and because partially of the way that this district was designed, he got... Fewer votes, uh, he got about half as many votes as um, John Sarbanes. John Sarbanes is also the incumbent. Um, so yeah, so that's what happened with this election that happened this past week in this Maryland's third congressional district. And now we can do something with this. For example, we can say like, if candidate one it dot votes is greater than candidate two dot votes, then we could print out like, um, that they won with candidate one dot name and else we could, I'm, I'm excluding the possibility of a tie. Um, but I think this would be good enough for now. And this will totally work. So let's check it out. And okay, so Sarbanes won in this case. Of course, if I didn't do this, if I didn't put in the name, if I wanted to change his name, so candidate one changed his name at the last minute, I wanted to complete his name. Um, I can't say candidate one dot name equals John Sarbanes. That's not gonna work because we can't assign to a race, right? Um, but we can do stir copy like this, and that's fine. Um, and I didn't type the stir copy function right, but there we go, that worked. And just to bring this back and to emphasize what's going on here, when we have this candidate struct, everything, the reason why this works well is because everything lives inside that struct. So in this case, we have the name and the party so the party was uh, D for this guy, and the votes was whatever it is, 196,000 something. Um, and the name is an array of chars that lives inside this struct. So it has size 128, and it stores each of the letter of the, na of the name inside that um inside that array. And the important thing is that that all lives inside the struct. So if I do anything with the struct, if I copy it or something else, um, that name is entirely inside it because of the way I declared that. And so whenever we can use stack base arrays inside our structs, uh, it makes the structs bigger, but it makes our lives a little bit easier as programmers.